welcome to it is what it is i'm sean marie and today we are going to do a fan pick from my facebook youtube instagram he follows me on everything his name is rodrigo ramirez he is also the host of chicanos and cars getting tacos out of at hope falls he his follow is rowdy tv underscore tv um you can find him on instagram youtube I'm not sure if he has a twitter or not probably does but he picked this one so when he told me this one i was like yeah i'll do it not a problem still glad that i did it but he's like oh there's a book and there's a movie anybody who listens to me knows i straight went movie i went movie way well i did try to find the audible of the book i can't but from what i understand the book and the movie like go hand in hand in a way so that's what i went with and uh today's episode is a little r-rated to start i get like the x x x x i'm gonna talk to y'all all sorts of dirty So, today's story is about Bobby Kent and what happened to him and what his so-called friends did. There is a movie and a book, like I said. It's called The Bully. Or Bully. I don't think The Bully. I think it's just Bully. Anyway, it was made in 2001. I have never seen this movie until this. Because at that time, at 2001, I would have been 11. My hood rat shit didn't start for two more years. That's on the other side of another story. Anyway, so I play this movie. You guys, (laughs) I decide, because my kids have a playroom, okay? It's a disaster. So I I rented this movie off of YouTube for $3.99. And I'm like, you know what is going to be amazing? I'm going to go clean the playroom in peace and watch this movie and it will be great. Because like in my head, I'm like, oh, it's going to be a murder movie, obviously. And this guy's a bully. So he's going to be just mean, mean, mean. And he was. But thank God I chose to go elsewhere and watch this movie. Because I kid you not, this is how the movie starts. This is where I'm going to talk dirty to you. Hold on, mom, skip a little bit. Starting like now. Okay. So the movie starts. All that great shit. And it (laughs) goes. And it starts off with. I want you to suck my big dick. Break. In the background. Marty, honey. It's time for dinner. He waits. And then he says, I want you to lick my balls. Uh Uh-huh. That's how the movie starts. Yeah. So, when when my computer said, suck my dick, I had to really check real quick. I was like, oh no, what? Oh no, what did I rent? no fear guys it's the same movie it just starts off dirty (laughs) and like the mom marty honey dinner (laughs) i almost died okay sorry i'm laughing by myself but it was super funny okay so i'm gonna tell you the story of bobby kent okay so real quick though before i go on if you there is a facebook page that says free marty Okay, and that's fine, and that's dandy. I guess his daughter put it together, and that's great. I'll tell you where she, all that happens. And that's fine and dandy. But <clears throat> this, I guess, back when they made the movie and the book and everything else, it was one of those, like, things to parents of, like, do you know where your kids are? And it was the, to tell parents pretty much, like, watch your fucking kids. And so that was like the basis of the um, reporting it, I guess, and doing the book and the movie and everything else. Because they, some people say that if the parents of these individuals 
would have paid attention to what was going on with their children. We would not be where we are, but we are. So, <clears throat> okay, we're going to, yeah. So if you are, like I said, if you guys are fans, I'm not saying fans, but if you guys believe that these people are not horrible people and just as bad as Bobby was at the very end, that's fine. But before you go any further, I just want to let everybody know, I'm going to tell you my thoughts. That is what he, this is what this person has asked me to do when reviewing this. So that is what I'm going to give him. Okay. So I'm going to give my God honest opinion because I watched this porn, I mean movie, a couple times to make sure because everybody says the murder scene and everything else in the movie is like almost a hundred percent on what actually happened. Almost a hundred percent. So that was insane. So yes, I watched it more than once. And if you guys don't watch it for just like the, like the actual movie, the fucking music in that movie top notch great shit I was jamming the whole time I really you can easily tune out of the show and just jam it's fine anyway let's get to it shall we <clears throat> okay so Bobby and Kent I mean Bobby and Marty huh I already renamed him damn it Bobby Kent sorry he met Martin aka Marty when they were in the third grade okay three third grade they became the greatest of pals they lived down the road from each other you could step outside marty's and look down and see bobby's very cute um they would always be together always they were always at each other's houses riding bikes playing together whatever it goes from building forts and all that nice fun stuff to chicks and we get interested in in smacks and sex and all that fun nonsense so towards the beginning of 1993 Marty 20 years old at the time and okay hold on I won't tell you that part yet okay so he's 20 years old at this time okay he begins dating a chick named Lisa Connolly. She's 18 years old. Now, Lisa decides, I don't fucking like Bobby, okay? I don't like Bobby. Marty has to spend a lot of time with Bobby. Bobby's a fucking asshole. So, he decides. She decides, not he. Sorry. This is all Lisa. She decides, I'm going to hook him up with my friend and sh to help distract him so that he'll be getting laid on the side by my best friend and I'll be over here and that doing my thing over here. So she sets up Marty with Allie, Allie Willis. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into her. <clears throat> At this time, she's 17 years old when she starts dating Bobby. They date for a few weeks. Now, in the movie, and the only reason why I'm going to refer to the movie is only because of the fact that I guess it is like beautifully done and the people who have seen the movie, I've seen re multiple reports where they say it's like a hundred percent, almost, almost right on. So, and the only thing that they really say is like not the truth is like the parents did act more concerned than what the movie portrays so they never said like hey our part of this is off so um so what happens this is what happens between Bobby and Allie to make them break up so I guess when Lisa introduces them she tells Allie she goes Allie check it out Dude's kinky as fuck. Like, he can put it down. He can... Like I said, guys, this is X-rated. We're gonna talk about fucking a lot. 
So he, she's like, check it out. He can fucking put it down. I've already hit it. Cause we're homie hopping. This is like a bunch of homie hopping. We just, everybody loves. We share everybody. It's caca. Um, so they say Bobby was a bully. Okay. And he was, he was, he wasn't even a fucking bully. He was an asshole, but like, I don't, oh God, we'll get into it guys. I just, I always like to jump ahead. Cause I always assume you guys are just like where I'm at in my head. I always got to remind myself to calm down. Any who, sir. Okay. So she was previously involved I don't believe she was ever charged or anything in a what could have been prostitution ring where she'd be fucking old. Like, kind of like the babysitter's club where they would be dicking down old dudes um, for money. So a little bit of a prostitution ring is really what it was, what it came down to. Um, So like I said, Bobby's very mean, like verbally and physically. So he is like mean to her he uses her so one time I guess towards the end of their relationship and this is the rape that she considers so warning um and I'm only saying considers because obviously he was never charged and she continuously went back to him and used her vagina as a weapon but anywho <clears throat> while they were in sexual relations Bobby put on a gay porn and was like forcing her to watch it and if she didn't watch it he would smack her punch her grab her hair force her to watch it while having intercourse and so honestly it is rape if she's at any point in time in that said no dude dude, dude stop said the pet magic no word it's rape so it's crazy. And when I say Bobby, I think Bobby might have secretly might have been swinging both ways. Secretly. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So Marty claims that Bobby pimped him out and that Bobby wasn't only his abuser and his best friend. He is also his pimp manager and owner. And he, Bobby beats up Marty. He's the weak friend. He is the friend that obviously something happened between third grade and adulthood that established Marty as being the weaker one out of the two. Okay. And it's to the point where there was I guess one instance where Marty's driving the car driving Bobby's car he like gets up on the sidewalk a little bit and Bobby beats the fuck out of him and like punches him in the face but then he gets like he pulls the car over and he's like fuck this shit I'm done and then he hits Bobby back they make up they get back in the car they roll so after I tell you what happens I'll tell you my opinion on the two but anywho so like I said, they cut it off. She stops dating him. So in June, um, Marty confides in Lisa that Bobby is in fact beating him up. And he has been for years. And he wants un- out of the control of Bobby. He wants to be able to do whatever he wants to do. And... At the time that he says, like, I need to get out, I want to get away, Lisa already knew in the back of her head she's telling him that she's pregnant with his baby. So, it's Marty's. I did read one thing that said the baby was Bobby's, but, like, I don't want to say that. I don't want that to, like, be true, so, I don't know. I didn't put it in the in this because I just don't believe it to be true because then you can like I'll tell you at the end you can go to their Facebook page and if you look at this their daughter and you look at the mom and the dad you're like yo okay Bobby not a chance because really not a chance anyway anyhow so now she knows she's pregnant and now she knows Lisa knows that Marty also wants Bobby out of the way so she starts thinking in her head, okay? You get the wheels, get to turning on this one. So she wants 
a permanent relationship with Marty. And so she doesn't want Bobby to get involved at all. So although Elisa admitted to having sex with Bobby as well as Marty, like I said, because I do have to say that she does own up to that part. She really does. She owns up. She owns up to everything except for the actual crime itself. I believe everybody does all the way up until that point. Like the planning and everything else. Everybody pretty much says like, yes, that is, it is true. Like that is how it happened. So like I said, it is Marty's baby. Anyway, a few weeks prior to the, to his murder, Bobby dated Allie, like I said, and then she moved back to Palm Bay, Florida. Cause this happened in Hollywood, Florida. Sorry. I should have said that. So she moves back to her parents and she says that Bobby said he was going to murder her and smother her baby from a previous relationship unless he went back to Broward County where they were where Bobby lives and dates him so, Lisa hates him already, okay? Already hates him. And it grows, and it grows. She's hating him because he's bullying Marty, as well as him raping now her best friend, Allie. And Bobby was a dick to Lisa, okay? She was a little on the chunky side. He would refer to her as fat ass, Tonka, potluck, Chubb and Sean Moon. He often encouraged or forced Marty to do the same thing. Allegedly. Oh my god. I just... I don't know. Okay, so Lisa decided that Bobby needed to be eliminated permanently. So they start talking to Marty and other friends about murdering him. She does. She's trying to, like, fill it out. She's trying to get the what do you think? What if? And just to see if everybody's like, oh, bitch, you're crazy. Or like, yeah, it's a good idea. Nobody told this bitch she's crazy. So <clears throat> Bobby was planning. Sorry, I just skipped ahead. I'm so sorry. So like I said, she's murdering them on Tuesday. Sorry, this is very important. On Tuesday, July 13th, Lisa, Marty's girlfriend, calls Allie and tells her, Bobby, He's planning to come here to Palm Bay. He's going to kill me, smother my baby. Unless I go back and I start dating him again. So Lisa asked her, she says, come to my house. While you're at my house, we will discuss murdering Bobby Kent. Fuck this fucker is what they say. So Allie goes to Lisa's house. She brings with her Oh yeah, y'all, this is, we're like seven fuckers deep in this murder. So she brings with her, her fucking whacked out of his mind. Sorry, honey, but damn, if you are true in the movie, does you any justice? Damn. Prison saved your life. So at the age of 17, Donnie, which his real name is Donald, and Heather, who's 18, who just leaves rehab because she's cute and adorable, but damn, girl, be fucked up. She's 18. Um, so Lisa, they all go to her house. She has found some fucking, no offense, but like dirt bag fucking in my neck of the woods. That's what I would consider him to be. He's the crazy dude that in my neck of the woods lives over in the numbered streets and thinks he's thug from the time he comes out the womb. And he's white as hell and he's nowhere near gangster. And if you kicked him in his shin, he'd probably cry. This guy, she finds this guy and his name is Derek. He is the quote unquote hitman who was recommended to her by a friend. So when Allie, Donnie and Heather arrive, they all go to Lisa's house. And then they go to Derek's house. 
They told him, we need a gun so we can kill Bobby tonight. But this is no stupid quote unquote gangster white trash little boy. He's like, hey y'all, I can't get a gun that fast. Like shit don't happen that fast. And y'all need a fucking plan. Before you go murder this dude, y'all need a plan. And so he was like the only one who at least had any intelligence on that level to tell them that. So the four went back to Lisa's house. Then Lisa, guys, I'm not a big fan of her. I am just, I'm just not y'all. I'm not. Okay. Sorry. Focus. Okay. Where Lisa calls her cousin, Derek, and I will refer to him as cousin Derek. Okay. So she calls cousin Derek. And she tells him that she needs him. So he comes. And Cousin Derek is the loner of the family. He is. He. I don't even know why the hell she called him. Like, she did not need to involve this poor, weird motherfucker into this shit at all. Like, when he was a child, a youth, I don't know. She did not. He makes an appearance. I could not find the video except for the clips that everybody else had of him but I guess there's like an amazing art video of him out there where he's just like I don't give a fuck like I did my time anyhow sorry that just let some shit out anyway so cousin Derek so um Marty wasn't at any of these meetings on the 13th at all he just knew that they were gonna happen and he was like hopefully everybody's chill and they're gonna come down so on July 14th around 11 30 p.m the six joined together at Marty's house, now becoming seven. They discussed the plan and the rules of the murder. Okay? Hitman Derek is like, what are you going to do? 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 And we hatch a plan. Okay? They had <clears throat> one lead pipe, two knives, and one baseball bat. So, Marty... Asked Bobby to join them around 11.45. And he also had dinner with Bobby that night. Marty did. Marty and Bobby, best friends, had dinner this night. So, <clears throat> Marty tells him, even though Allie is accusing you of raping her and hates you, she would love to fuck you again. And the I decided not to tell you guys about all the other fucking because it's a lot. But in the movie, legit, y'all, we be fucking all the time. Like, the first time they meet these girls, fucking, we just be fucking. Like, Marty and Lisa in the back seat getting it down. Bobby getting head in the front seat. Like, and it just fucking everywhere you be. And then you got girls, like, licking up on each other. We got some swinging. And, like, literally, I just prayed after I watched it and washed all those sins away. But literally, guys, it's a fucking porno with a murder. And, like, if the... Guys, they say the murder is legitly almost 100%. And we're almost to that. And I will tell you guys what the um, mortician said. And, oh, my God. There's even one scene in the movie that, like... I'll tell you which part it is because it gets crazy. So anyway, so like I said, he tells Bobby, come at 1145, we're going to go. And so Bobby thought that they were going to go hook up and drive and race her new car, I guess. So altogether, they headed out to a construction site that's pre-planned. As soon as they get there, Allie is the one who sets up the plan. She takes Bobby off to a secluded spot when they were talking Heather walks up and joins them and while she's there to distract Bobby and the code word was alligators I guess I guess fucking dumbass code word anyway so then Donnie comes up from behind after hearing the code word stabs Bobby in the neck with a knife Bobby yells out for Marty and he's screaming, Marty, whatever I've done, I'm sorry. Whatever made you mad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Marty. Help me, Marty. 
Instead of helping him, Marty walks up to his best friend since third grade and guts him. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what happens. Oh, God. And then Derek approaches and hit Derek the hitman. And after they're stabbing him, okay, because Bobby gets away for like a second. And he's trying to get away. They all chase him. So you got Donnie and Marty stabbing him, okay? And then they get out, flip him over, and he's on his back. And Marty gets on top of him and cuts his throat once, and then cuts his throat a second time. And dude, in the movie, that's the part where I was like, oh my god, oh no, oh no. Well, they're, they're still making sound. He's making sounds. And so Derek the Hitman comes up with the baseball bat and fucking tink home runner on Bobby. And while this happens, Allie runs to her car in complete fear. Her headlights are on for some part of it until they hit him with the, um, the bat. And then she's yelled at to turn her headlights off. And her cousin Derek is in the car with her. Okay. Allie and her cousin are in the car. Okay. Bam. I'm gonna say, sorry, Lisa's cousin, not Allie's cousin. Anyway, he's in the car. And they're both fucking panicking and freaking out. Same with Heather. She's in the back seat, fucking losing her mind when all this pops off. The only psychopath that's out there amongst the men doing this crime is Lisa. Insane. She watches the whole thing. So they murder him. They toss him over. They're hoping that the gators are going to get him. I guess it was like, I don't know. The gators just didn't. Crabs were eating him. But like, so they go back to the beach where they were supposed to go meet up. And They realize that, like, they went back to his body. Hitman Derek and Marty went back because Marty had left his knife cover. And Hitman Derek was like, we left so fast that, like, we didn't even fucking think about shit. We didn't do it right. Tire tracks and shit like that. He starts thinking about all the things that he's known from the quote unquote streets. So he's like, we got to go back anyway because we fuck shit up. Well, when they do that. Okay, and everybody else is sitting at the beach having their come apart moment. And your girl Lisa, even though she planned all this and we wanted Mar- we wanted Bobby fucking dead. Fuck Bobby. And like through the whole movie, dude, she's like, I'm going to do this to Bobby. I'm going to do this to Bobby. Turns out after it's done to Bobby, she ain't got the stomach for it. So here are your conspirators. You have Marty who was born March 21st, 1973. Like I said, he was Bobby's best friend and boyfriend of Lisa Connolly. Lisa Marie Connolly was born July 31st, 1974. She's Marty's boy girlfriend, boyfriend, huh? She was mad at Bobby for bullying Marty and allegedly raping her friend, Allie. And also for the fact that Bobby would call her things, again, such as badass, tonka, potluck, chubs, and shamu. And often making her boyfriend do the same, so it hurt her boy, so it hurt her feelings. On January 15th, Lisa gave birth to hers and Marty's daughter behind bars. And she went to go live with Lisa's parents in Central Florida. And then you got, you got Allie. Sorry, Allie's the one I can't stand. Lisa, you're good, girl. My bad. Ugh, Allie. Okay, Allie was born August 29th, 1974, 1975. She's the one that says Bobby rapes her. And just because I don't like you doesn't mean I don't believe you. But that's fine. So she is the one who helps lead, okay, and helps make the plot. Keep in mind, those two girls, Lisa and Allie, 
have made this plot to kill him. And just snowballed it down from there. Any hooser. I'm going to play you guys a video here in just one smackin'. And uh, you guys will see why. This whole thing is disgusting. This whole fucking video is disgusting. And it's only because it's Dr. Drew. And I love Dr. Drew. Love all of his shows. But she's just absolutely a horrible person. Anyway. So you have Donnie. And July 15th was his birthday. He was born in 1975. It was his 18th birthday. This is what he chose to do for his 18th birthday. He is Allie's boyfriend at the time. He's an habitual drug user. Um, He is a part of it because of the raping of his girlfriend. So that's why he is there. And then you got Derek Kaufman, who is the self-proclaimed, self-proclaimed hit mafia, (laughs) mafia hitman, who was enlisted by the group to plan and go out and help achieve his murder. He didn't know any of the co-conspirators until that day. Like I said, he was a cool gang leader of a bunch of kids from the age of 7 to 10. He was their gang leader. And some, like, and the kids were 7 to 10 years younger than him. Okay? So you got fucking 8, 9 year olds doing petty theft for you and then you have cousin Derek who after um he's the one that actually borrowed the baseball bat from a friend that actually ended up giving like the final blow to Bobby's head um he was offered a plea deal when all this came about, but it was taken away from him when he lied on the stand. But, I don't know. He got four extra years, by the way, for lying on the stand. And then Heather. She is a previous friend of Allie's, obviously. We're no longer friends. Who had gotten out of rehab, like, almost, like, the same week that all this shit happened. So... Um, she got in trouble for her part in his murder as well. Even though she didn't participate in the murder, she still got in trouble for it. She made a plea deal, but her deal went through because she did not lie on the stand. Okay. So, let me tell you what the morticianer, the mortician said before I play you. Um this sweet, gross little video of Allie. Okay, so the medical examiner testified that Bobby's body had resulted from multiple stab wounds. There were two stab wounds to the back of his neck. One stab wound um, penetrated the skin. One went in two inch, was two inches depth along his backbone. The other wound was located in the back of Bobby's head, scalp deep. There were Um, superficial stab wounds in his right shoulder. None of the wounds penetrated more than an inch of an inch and a half below the skin. Bobby's right abdomen was slashed open. That's the one where he was like, Marty, Marty. And Marty came and gutted him. That's when. Um, The wound pressed through like all the way through and punctured tissue all the way in his lower back. Like it went right through his diaphragm, like on his right side. His intestines were protruding from his body. You also see that in the movie. Um, two defensive wounds were located on the back of his right arm. When he put his arm up in defense of the crimes being committed against him. And the other one is on his left hand. There are two wounds in the slicing motion that go on his neck. The upper wound on his neck is four inches across, while the lower wound is five inches across. The voice box or windpipe was severed. 
This prevented Bobby from being able to speak and caused blood to wipe, like to completely fill up his airway and bring all the air out of his lungs. It also caused Bobby's neck to fracture just above where his head was cut. The two bones right there are fractured, which causes his head to move back and forth. Bobby was stabbed in the left chest. Those wounds were two inches across, six inches deep. The knife protruded three of his four heart chambers, going through to his lungs and puncturing the tissue in between his ribs and the back of his chest. There was a two inch long laceration on Bobby Kent's right scalp. This injury was inflicted by the blunt instrument, AKA the bat. His skull was not fractured. Okay, now I'm gonna play you this lovely sunshine's video. Okay, and I have to pause it like once and then talk shit and then I can unpause it, copyright. Gotta do it. I had a boyfriend that abused me extremely bad. Well, he was supposed to, there was supposed to be a fight and he was supposed to get beat up. He ultimately got murdered right in front of me. Um, everybody went to prison. I went for eight years on a 40 year prison sentence. Okay. Did you have anything to do with him being murdered or it was just because you were there? Um, the majority because I was there to watch a fight and it turned into a murder. That's, that's me. Okay. <clears throat> What this is, is she's revealing to her best friend this deep, dark secret that she's held inside for so many years. And so she goes on the Dr. Drew show to get this help, to confide in this friend that she was a part of this. As you guys hear her, she says, my boyfriend at the time, he beat me up so terribly bad, profusely beat me up and so I went to prison because I was there when he was supposed to get beaten up never once does she like he viciously raped me as she claimed when she was a teenager but now he was just very abusive we will let her go on it'll clear us um because of the abuse I had suffered from him physically yes okay the boys were supposed to beat him up and it turned into more than just beating him Did you up. hire the boys to no. have them beat One him? was his best friend of 15 years. There was actually more to that that I didn't even know of happened between the two of them until after I was arrested to why they did what they did. She's full of shit. that ultimately did, had nothing to do with me, that part. There, there are two parts, I think, that are important, though. You, you helped get him to that location. Yes. To be fair, yes. You, you got him there. You, yes, I've always taken that responsibility. People say you lured him there. I've always been there, yes. And then once it happened, then she was threatened with her life if she were to say anything to anybody. And you oh, should also okay. own own the piece where you were the one that did speak up. Which yes, this I did. Part I'm right the one that went to lie. the police. And, that is, oh, after basically got the whole investigation no, it's rolling. Not. No, she's not. This is yes. compli- messy, messy, complicated. She is not. And with the trauma history and all, you kind of know how those things happen. Shannon, I, I see you struggling, trying to get your head around it. What, what are you feeling? Um. I feel that if it was... Uh, so I, it's just I was, the friend's like, oh, well, I understand I was abused too by a boyfriend, but I left. I got out of the situation. And what I don't understand... Okay, so Bobby dies. Bobby's this horrible, mean guy. Okay? He picks on you. He's been beating up Marty for countless number of years. Okay? I'm not 100% sure on how many years when the abuse started or whatever and how long I guess according to Marty Bobby forced him to strip at a gay club where Marty takes all the money they try to do a gay porn that doesn't turn out very well they try to use it for like blackmail they just these two there's a bunch of they use that world and a bunch throughout this that the um prostitution dancing sex money always gets you where you need to be type of thing and 
Dude, when you're dumb and young and full of cum, you don't think things through. But at the same time of being a bully, your thing to deal with a bully is to murder him. Hmm. Your best friend. See, obviously he wasn't your best friend. Which, obviously not, because you murdered him. Obviously. But, I see where she's coming from. Where Lisa was coming from. Where she was like, hey, I don't want to see my boyfriend get beat up. And if I can get him away from this guy, I'll get more time with him. We can have a family. Blah, blah, blah. I get it. I do. But murder? Like, really? Y'all, doesn't need to go that far? It sure fucking didn't. And then Allie, who claims rape, calls, has the conversation with Lisa, and she's like, yeah, fuck this dude. He's fucking dead. He's done for. Now she's just like, well... They were just supposed to beat him up because I wanted to see him get beat up like he did to me because he beat me up. So I wanted him beat up. And maybe, truly, other people did not say other people and other people, meaning his family, didn't say Bobby was a vicious bully. I honestly believe it was these people were just too weak and didn't stand up for themselves at all. I mean, if literally he would call him bitch boy and he would tell these girls like, bitch, move. Motherfucker, please, I dare you. Even in my weakest points in life, no way in hell would I just like willingly let someone talk to me like that. And honestly, if someone would have beaten Bobby's ass, okay, Hypothetically, let's just say they go out there and Marty fucking whoops them one, one good time. Nine times out of ten, y'all, that fucking quote unquote bully ain't going to be a bully no more. Because he knows you're done putting up with this shit. But when you sit there and you want to be a weak person, and that's my opinion, so go ahead and hate me for it. And let yourself get beat up by this when you. There's, there was a size difference, don't get me wrong. But like, as a little kid, dude, how easy is it to go to your parents and be like, I don't want to hang out with him because he's mean. And like his parents did see the black eyes and the marks and the bruises on Marty from Bobby. And Bobby's parents didn't like Marty because Marty was a high school dropout. Well, they all were. But Bobby went and he graduated and he was going to become something. And all this nonsense. So like... I just, you have a group of people being led by one person and she says, let's do this. So then we all start hyping each other up. And not only is she like, Hey, let's go do it. But she's like, Hey, I know a guy who knows a guy that knows a guy. We're going to go to that guy's house. And we arrive there and we have this fucking weird ass dude. Who's a gang leader of a bunch of children who are probably taking a nap at the arrival of the murder plot his gangsters are napping and he's like hey i'm a fucking mafia man and they're like for sure i know you are let's do this and he's talking to them and he's like y'all you guys this fucking plan sounds dumb as fuck i'm gonna go with you so that i know that you guys don't fuck this up that's why this dumbass is there that's why derek the hitman is there dumbass and then when he they say give me the gun then they go and they're like you know what we can fucking pop him with Lisa's mom's gun. So Allie and Lisa, before the night of his murder, call up Bobby and they're like, hey, we, just us two, want to go out there. And Allie gets pounded back on the goddamn hood of the car. Lisa's supposed to walk up behind and fucking pop him in the dome. She loses it. All that ends up happening that night is Bobby pop, pop, busts a nut. That's all that happens that night. The next night he was murdered. So... And then you got fucking Bobby. I mean, not Bobby. Sorry, Donnie. Who is out of his 
mind. He is on LSD. He is like two sheets to the fucking wind. He's all sorts of hyped up and like ready to roll. Adrenaline, just a pounding and a going. And then you got Lisa's little nerdy cousin, Derek. Well, he's not little. He's a pretty big dude. But Derek, the hitman, tells him, he's like, you're going to help us get rid of the body, motherfucker, because everybody's involved. And in the movie, this part's not true. But in the movie, Lisa can't help herself. She goes and she goes and tells a friend, that friend's mom, in turn tells the police, whatever have you. That's not what happened. What happened is cousin Derek went to his mom. No, sorry. Lisa goes to her mom and confides in her about the murder. Because these guys are all losing their minds, dude. Everybody except literally Marty and Hitman Derek are losing their fucking minds. They think everybody knows that every they think everybody knows everything. They're paranoid, is what it is. So anywho, she goes to her mom. Her mom calls Derek's mom. And then they inf- turn around and call their brother, who has connections at the fucking cops with the cops and everything else so that's how this whole thing starts cousin Derek takes them to Bobby's body and then at the end you see him all in court and Lisa's telling Marty like hey I'm gonna have a sonic I'm gonna have the baby here in a couple weeks Marty's like snap me a picture she's like for sure I love you Heather takes a deal and goes through with her deal and that's like not lying she's legit about it Derek is offered the same deal as Heather and everybody else. Cousin Derek lies on the stand, so his deal dropped. He got the extra four years for that. And so what happens is Heather was charged with second-degree murder and conspiracy. Um, She got seven years with her plea deal, and she was released in February 14th, 1998, Not much about her life past this is known. She's done a very good job of keeping out of the public eye and just wanting to get away from it, which I honestly feel bad for her because she was really just like, even though she gave the quote unquote quote code word and that was the alligators. I don't know. This girl, I think just needed a damn hug. Like, I don't know. She was out of her mind anyway. So Derek was cousin Derek he got second degree murder and conspiracy 11 years he was released October 1st 1999 Alice Willis got second degree murder and conspiracy 40 years she got an appeal got it down to 17 years she was released on parole on several September 16th 2001 And then she did break that and ended up going back to jail, too, for something that happened in a traffic violation. Oh, and Donnie, a.k.a. I guess he now goes by Day. um, Second degree murder and conspiracy, life plus seven years. He is incarcerated at the Columbus Auxiliary. I'm not sure. In D.C. Um, So he got life because... I'll remind you, Donnie's the one who originally went and stabbed him first after hearing the code word from Heather, alligators, goes up and stabs them. Derek, hitman, got first degree murder and conspiracy. The jury recommended life and he was sentenced to life plus 30 years. He is incarcerated still to this day. Lisa, second degree murder, conspiracy, life with five years. She got that reduced on an appeal to 22 years. She was released on parole on in February 3rd, 2004. She has a the, another child with another man after her release. And Marty, best friend of Bobby, got first degree murder conspiracy he originally got sentenced to die in the electric chair but that was just taken back to life and like i said his daughter has a free marty facebook page which is fine and i understand why everybody thinks he needs to be released 
but I look at it as this guy when his best friend was apologizing uh, mercifully, okay? Begging his friend for help. Come help me. Help me, best friend. Things have gone awry. I have been stabbed. Help me, best friend. No. This person walked up to him, looked him eyeball to eyeball, and sliced open his goddamn gut. What exactly are we freeing him for? You want him to be freed because he is your dad, which I love, respect, got it. I'm, I'm with you, 100%. Daddy, we love daddy. But daddy did a bad thing. Not just a bad thing. Like, I understand he is a bully, but honestly, I think really one person standing up to this motherfucker, I really don't believe he would have been dead. And yes, I use motherfucker, I disrespect the dead, whatever have you. Go on. But not only is this family forever, their loved one is forever known as a bully, which is horrible because now no one mourns him the correct way. I just refer to him as a motherfucker. But like, and I don't mean it disrespectfully, I just use it as a term. But anywho... But, like, their loved one wasn't a bully to them. That was someone's baby boy. That was someone's brother. Someone's, him and his father had plans. And even though he beat up Marty, he was wanting to take Marty along the ride with him. To whatever success or whatever failures or whatever it was, yeah, Bobby fucking was going to drag Marty through it with him. Maybe that is bad and that wasn't a true friend. I I mean, you don't beat up your friend at all. Like, that's not what happens. But everybody wants to sit here and say, well, nowadays, Marty runs gospel in the prison. And what I want to say to that is, you know, God, everybody finds that dude. Okay, before, we don't know who he is. We don't pray for him. We don't worship him. We don't nothing. But when we go to jail, hallelujah, amen, we found him. God saves us. I'm in jail. God saved me. I have changed my ways. I have done it differently. What happens to the next dude who you let pick on you, fool? You know, you're just going to go out and kill him and be like, well, you know, God didn't say I didn't have to. No, my brother, no. And like, now as parents, they're like, oh, well, we feel bad. As his parent, as parents, we feel bad. You should. If I beat up or got murdered every fucking dude that called me fat when I was a teenager, we'd be out some people. I was a big girl. To this very day, I still am kind of thick. So, like, if I... And if I would have gotten every girlfriend to fucking get a murder conspiracy because her boyfriend called me fat, but amen. You know what I mean? We'd be down a lot of people. You don't... You you don't ever have the right to take a life is the moral of the story. No matter how big of a bully, no matter what happens to you I get wanting to kill a dude I do oh I'm with you but actually doing it and doing it in such a way that I don't know dude like it was just such a a horrible way the dude wasn't even dead when he hit him with the bat when hitman Derek hit him with that bat he wasn't dead When they took him over to the water and dumped his body, he pretty much like was left there, gurgling, suffocating, dying on his own shit. And his best friend, the only person he's known, and he knew the minute something happened to him, I have upset Marty. He knew. Pleads for his friend. And that's what happens. And then all you want to sit there when you go to court, This is why I wish murderers would just have the backbone that they had at the time of the crime when shit like this happens. 
all you fuckers are gun ho to go do it, right? And then you do it and then you get caught. And then all of a sudden when you get caught, he was mean. I didn't want to. I only did it because she did it. I wouldn't have done it if he wouldn't have done it. Where's your balls, man? A couple weeks ago, you were fucking bigger than everybody. You know? Like, like Lisa, how dare you sit there and go on a show? I mean, Allie, sorry, Allie, Lisa, Alice, Alice, Lisa, Alice. I mean, Allie, Alice, whatever. She changed her name. I believe it's Alice now. But, um, Alice goes on a show and downplays everything. Are you fucking kidding me? You're the one who's like, nah, dude, we're killing him because he raped me. He made me watch gay porn while boning me. Ain't about to have it. I also did stick him down two more times before he died. That's irrelevant. Not gonna happen. No, girl. Urch, stop. Hold up. Wait a minute. The only reason why you went on the Dr. Drew show with your friend is because you needed money. I believe, personally. Because that shit was disgusting. How dare you go there and be like, mmm... I might have, I did lure him. Yes, yes. I've always said that. Yes. But he was only supposed to go out there to get beaten up. That is it. That is all. Girl, you damn well know. That is not what you went out there to do. And I, I was just a friend with a bunch of kids. No, dude, you planned this shit. So anywho, everybody's pretty much out. Except for... Derek, Donnie, and Bobby. I mean, and Marty, sorry. So, I don't fucking know, guys. Even if people are mean to you, you ain't got a right to kill them. Just because they called you fat, you ain't got a right to kill them. Just because your friend makes you strip as an adult and you still continue to strip and your friend's not paying you and this is your best friend and you still live with your parents and you still go to your best friend's house for dinner, get a new fucking friend. Just fucking saying. The other, everybody else and Hitman Derek has gotten in a lot of trouble since being in prison. He's not a good inmate. He is a dick and he's a bully. Check that out. Maybe we should have fucking two birds, one stone, but we didn't. So, and Lisa got out to take care of hers and Bobby's kid. I guess her and the daughter don't talk. Like I said, she has other children. Um, I don't know. Ever, cu- oh yeah, cousin Derek, he got out. He was a truck driver for a little bit of time. I'm not a hundred percent sure what he does to this day. Nobody talks to each other, and like I said, Heather has stayed pretty much underground. They do. There was one reporter that said one report I read that said that she had like two kids now, but that's all I could find on her. And. All you got to do if you want to watch the Alice's thing is just, I just did Allie, but you can do Alice reveals her secret to Dr. Drew or some shit like that. It's not a Dr. Drew episode. I don't fucking know. It's disgusting. So hopefully I did this justice and... I did it the way he wanted it to be done and still likes my show. So (laughs) hopefully I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. Like I said, I really, I don't mean any disrespect to the actual people. Just in my telling of the version of the story, it might sound like I'm a hateful fucking bitch and I'm not, I promise. So yeah, he's going to put this on his Instagram and everything. So I don't know. I'm super nervous. So let me know, bro. Let me know what you think, how it went and everything else. And I love every one of you. Thank you all for all the love I've gotten lately. I appreciate every little bit of it. And I think I've just like accomplished my almost full whole hour by myself. You guys are crazy. So hit me with the next fan one. What else? Who else? I like doing this stuff. I like learning and things about people I didn't know about. I have never heard about Bobby Kent in my life because honestly, I don't want to sound like an ass, but I knew a bunch of dudes like Bobby my whole life. 
And to think that someone would have killed my friend for being the asshole is just sad. Don't be a dick. Moral of the story, don't be a bully. If your kids are being bullied by their friends, don't let your kids be their friend. Okay, guys, common fucking sense. Common sense is the moral 